So I am absolutely delighted to give you all a very cold Lancashire welcome back to the channel today. Before we get into anything, a huge thanks to Valerie Photography Gloves for supporting my work in sponsoring this video. A lot of you already know how much I love these photography gloves and how apt are these conditions. I've got my Ipe suit gloves on today, which in my last sponsor video I said are my favourites. There's the finger caps so we can still use our camera top draw. I'm a huge fan of these. If you want to get your own pair, head over to photographygloves.com. That's Valerie's website. And be sure to use the code Henry at checkout to get yourself free shipping. Awesome stuff. So winter wonderland guys. Oh, this is class. So I came to this very location a couple of days ago to scout. I'd never been, been up here before. And I realized later on in the week, i.e. today, it was forecast snow, kind of higher up. Um, this is a location, of you, as you've probably seen there, that you can drive up to, get pretty high up into the snow. So as long as the road's all right, you can get up here. What a treat. Um, it is forecast snow a bit later on, so hopefully I don't get trapped up here, but if I do, um, yeah, I've got a coffee with me and <laughs> I'll probably just have to call somebody, so it's probably a bit selfish, but <sighs> absolutely buzzing. So today I want to talk all about... Um, how to get the best out of your winter photography. And I've just got a couple of really simple um, tips that I want to get into. Uh, but first, I've got an idea for a composition. Let's go and get set up. Whoa. Isn't it just class? Oh, isn't it just mint? How much the snow transforms the landscape. Oh, that feeling. This is the first snowfall of the year, guys, as well. So I'm going to be pretty excited. Um, so yeah, I've been checking the forecasts quite a lot. I'll put my little windy app up on the screen here quite a lot over the past two to three days just to see snowfall. Uh, I've been mad to get into a little bit of outdoor, uh, a little bit of winter outdoor photography, obviously. And um, we were getting pretty decent forecasts for snowfall on the higher fells, you know, the Yorkshire Three Peaks, the higher areas in the Forest of Boland and stuff, which is where I'm at today. Now, I want to give you a little bit of a tip. This doesn't have anything to do with the title of the video, but this is something that I started doing last year, and this is all about snowfall. Try and get into the habit of using webcams. So on this particular app on Windy, in my wider area, let's say, you know, the Lake District, Yorkshire Dales, Forest of Boland, um, there must be like 20 different webcams and they seem to update hourly at least. That, that is priceless, you know, just to see if there's been snowfall in your area. Um, and you can see certain landmarks on it, like for example, around here, you can always see Ingleborough. Um, worth its weight in gold. So get into that habit. That'd be um, a really good tip, I think, if you've never heard of that. Um, but yeah, the forecast seemed to have worked out this time, unlike a week or so ago with the fog. Um, it's amazing. Honestly, what a treat. So I'm going to start off with this first composition. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Like I mentioned just before there, I came here the other day, did a little bit of a scout. And one of the first things that I noticed was this little style here. Um, just made for it. It's made for it. You know, classic traditional um, landscape shot from up on these moorlands here in the forest of Boland. Um, so I'm going to have a nice simple 4 by 3 crop, I think. Um, I've got the wide angle lens and I'm angled down slightly because I want to capture quite a lot of this snow down here in the foreground. Um, you can see I've got the centre column up, that's just because I want the camera higher up. <laughs> Obviously I'm not too fussed about using the centre column unless my shutter speed really so a lot of people don't like it but it's there to be used. Um, I've come up a little bit just so we can peer over the wall because we're getting a nice vista down into this valley which is snowless so it's going to give a nice contrast between us being up here on the snowy moorlands and uh, down there in the valley and in the towns and stuff where there isn't any snow. It gives a real sense of altitude, I think, even though, you know, we're not in the Alps. <laughs> oh, this is class. So, ISO 100 and F9, and I focused on the style. It's the most important subject within this frame. It doesn't need to be complicated. Shutter speeds, one eighth of a second. Now, another little tip when you're shooting snow, uh, make sure you don't underexpose. If anything, you wanna, obviously don't overexpose in terms of the histogram, uh, but if you underexpose, your snow can go this kind of like hor horrible sort of gray, bluey color. Um, I think, I'm not 100% sure if you know really what happens here. I think the sensor can get a bit tricked by the snow. It doesn't really know how to expose for the snow because everything is just white. 
Um, but yeah, just be careful with that. I've actually overexposed ever so slightly so that the snow is still going to retain that sort of pearly white colour, you know. Uh, or sh I should say snow white colour, shouldn't I really? Um, just briefly before I show you this shot, there's one thing that I want to say um, in light of honesty. I had to come up and over this style, so I've kind of, I didn't want to leap off it. So I've left a few really subtle footprints on it, uh, which I'm probably going to clone so it looks like there's no footprints on it in Photoshop. Um, th that's at your discretion as the photographer, you know. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that, especially when, you know, two minutes ago, there wasn't any footprints on it, you know. Um, it's just, I think that's what cloning is made for, that sort of thing. Uh, but either way, that's what I'm going to do. So a nice simple one to start off the day. Conditions are stunning. Hope you like this one. And I'll tell you what, we could be spending a whole day here, guys. A whole day. loving it uh, so how do you get the best out of your winter photography <laughs> let's talk about that um, this first one is really simple and doesn't really have anything to do with photography that much and it's just common sense it's doing exactly what I'm doing today and coming out and hunting for snow in the same way that you do in autumn you hunt for the autumn colors you know summer you hunt for heather um, spring you might be out hunting for for bluebells or something, you know, in your woodlands. It's exactly the same concept. Of course, it's very dependent on where you live, things like this, but here in the UK, um, you know, especially where I live, I'm lucky enough to live in the Northwest. All it's took for me is to drive up somewhere high and chase the snow. And that's it, you instantly, like, you can't beat this stuff. You know, winter, winter's the best season for me, 100% for landscape photography, everything. It's just beautiful. It transforms the landscape. <sighs> what a treat. I always think this, right? You know, come spring, your family, you know, if you're into your landscape photography, your family and friends and stuff will reminisce on the winter and they'll always say, oh, we didn't have much snow this winter, did we? And I always think like, it's mad, like I've had nothing but snow all winter because I've been out hunting it, you know? Of course, if they're not into that sort of thing, they're not, you know, here in the UK, if you don't know, we're not always guaranteed snow, you know, down at sea level, down in the towns and cities. Whereas up high in the mountains, again, it's not guaranteed, but from my experience, we usually get snow up in the fells, like. So if you're out hunting it all the time, you're in it all the time. It's as simple as that. And you'd be, you'd be getting some smashing um, landscape photographs, winter photographs, right? Getting that feeling of overwhelm that it's a love-hate thing, but lucky, luckily enough, I did scout this area the other day, like I've said a couple of times, and uh, I've even got a few compositions in mind, so I'm going to walk a little bit further around in this direction. We've got some beautiful rocks up here in the forest of Boland, rocky outcrops, gorgeous vistas. Um, so let's go and see what else we can find. <laughs> Right, so um, we are set up for another shot that I'll talk to you about in a minute, but just met this gentleman here, Lee Metcalf. I've got his book. 
<laughs> I parked, I parked, um, I mean, you've seen where I parked at the start of the video in the Red Beast, and I parked next to his van, and he's got like a little um, display on the back, and it said Lee Metcalf Photography. And I was thinking, ah, oh, I've got this guy's book, hopefully I'll see him out here, and there he is, so. Um, yeah, go and say hello. Um, hello. Is it just Google Lee Metcalf Photography, is it? Yeah, just Lee Metcalf Landscape Photography yeah. and you'll find me. Sweet. Uh, class photographer and he does so much round here. You know, if you like these landscapes. He was just telling me actually, if anybody knows the Photo View books, he's doing... Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's doing... Um, is it the North, the North West? Photograph in the North West, so look out for that. He's uh, due out uh, sort of this time next year. Oh, pretty soon then. Decent. Yeah. So yeah, go and say hello to Lee. <laughs> Uh, I think he's got a bit of a YouTube channel as well, so you'll probably be able to find that through all his website and that. But, chat to you about this composition in a minute. Whoa, he's coming in thick and fast now. He's kicking off. I said to you just then that I'll chat to you about this composition in a minute. Whoa, snow in the eye. <laughs> Me and Lee have been studying here chatting for about an hour. Uh, proper sound bloke. You know when you just, well, we're both landscape photographers. We just relate with everything, you know. I think a lot of the times, because I'm out and about shooting on my own, I just think I'm an, a lunatic because <laughs> I'm getting up at stupid times, coming out and chasing these sorts of weather conditions. Um, I think it's just socially not a normal thing to do, is it? Um, but when you relate with somebody like that, you could I think you could just chat all day. Um, so yeah, definitely go and check out his... his I'll, put, I'll put a link to his website down in the video description. Really nice bloke and fantastic photographer. Now, let's get into this shot. Um, over the past hour as well, you can see now it is actually, I'd say it's probably sleeting, snowing every now and again, but we're getting a lot more on the ground, which is great, you know. And I've found, you can see here, this particular rock that's got a lot of gorgeous texture to it. Um, I feel like it's got pretty much the perfect amount of snow. Me and Lee were just saying, actually, this is about spot on. You know when sometimes there's too much snow? Imagine if this rock was just a big lump of white. <laughs> You've still got all the texture in the rock, which is... Um, fantastic so it's a great middle ground so what i've done is i've stuck the wide angle 11 to 16 millimeter lens on and uh, i've got quite got in quite close to the rock and um making it the king subject within the frame in saying that it is only the foreground i've got it on the left hand side over near the left hand third somewhere and that's what i've focused on but the background is gorgeous we've got a small little i wouldn't even go as I wouldn't even go as far as calling it a tarn. It's probably just a pond. <laughs> uh, but I've got him right in the center of the frame. And then off in the background, uh, we've got a few sort of rocky outcrops, these craggy areas. And then right off in the background, we've got this like low lingering cloud, like fog. Oh, it's beautiful. It's so atmospheric. And like, there's so much depth to the photograph as well, because it goes from the rock to the little pond then off to the rocky outcrops then we just get that atmosphere in the background of all the fog um, so it's nice and simple honestly it's a really simple composition so like i said i focus on the rock i'm shooting it at f14 so we get a nice bit of focus throughout it'd probably even be all right at f11 probably even f9 um, i don't mind if i lose a bit of focus going off into the background i find that quite natural uh, one eighth of a second and uh ooh, iso 100 the old snout's getting chilly Hope you like it. take another shot here see set up but it's just a quick stop I don't really need to go into too much detail with this one you saw hopefully what I was eyeing up there another 
gorgeous style. I think this one's going to be the shot of the day so far, to be honest. Um, style, left hand side of the frame, and then we've got this wall, this this like snowy wall leading us through the landscape into, uh, we can't see it at the minute, but there was a fell in the background that was kind of snow capped. So we still had the greenery of the valley and then it faded into the snow at the top of the fell. Great composition. I'm really looking forward to this one, getting it home and editing it. I think this is going to be beautiful. Try to play around with my shutter speed a little bit to try and capture some of the flurry, some of the snow flurries. I'm going to put an image up on the screen here um, that I took last year at Ullswater in the Lake District. That's one of my favourite ever photographs. Uh, and yeah, great memories. We had a snow flurry and I tried to capture the movement of the snow. It came out almost like a pencil sketch, you know, I like to think. And I want to replicate a shot like that this year. So I'm trying to go for that this time. I just don't think we've quite got enough snow, but we'll see. Uh, I like the composition either way. Quite tricky to, to shoot. I'm having to wipe the lens and grab the shot and then kind of shield the camera and the lens, most importantly, um, from the snow coming from the side. I could probably do with a lens hood, to be honest here. And that would be a lot more sensible. But I think this is going to be nice. So another nice, simple composition. Um, Hope you like it and then I'm going to carry on to what's going to be my final destination for today and then I want to talk about one more thing, one more way that we can get the best out of winter with our photography. Um, so yeah, let's crack on. <laughs> My crisps feel like they've come out of the fridge. <laughs> they've been in my bag all day. Um, so quite unlike me, actually, uh, I'm gonna go for a bit of a safety first. Um, I don't want to get stuck up there in the red beast. So I've come a little bit further down, probably just a little bit below the snow line. I hate saying that because it sounds like I'm in the Alps or something, but you know what I mean. Um, anyway, let's go on to this second tip. Um, how to get the best out of your winter photography. Again, it's really simple. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the technicalities of photography. And this is to try and get out in the mornings. Um, and I'm saying this to myself more than I am to anybody. My favorite, if anybody asks me what, what are your ultimate landscape photography conditions, it'd be winter, first thing in the morning at dawn when you're just getting the break of the sunlight, when you've got frost, um, like hoar frost, something like that, um, frozen tans, um, fog or like mist or something oh, that is the creme de la creme of landscape photography conditions so that'd be my next bit of uh, or, or my final bit of really simple advice um just get out in the mornings more you know and of course if you're in places like the lakes there's less chance that all photographic scenes are going to be ruined by footprints and um, all that sort of thing and not to mention the light and everything you know you just get that fresh snow first thing in the morning if it's snowed overnight Ah, oh, so apologies guys, my battery just ran out. Uh, there we go. I'm gonna call it a day because um, what's happened is all this low cloud has come in and it's just a little bit too much up there. I think at the start of the morning, it was nice, a nice amount of cloud. It was atmospheric, you know, it was helping the photographers now. It's just very poor visibility. So it's actually working against us. Um, but I'll tell you what, like I said earlier, this is one of the best days I've out with my camera. I've had out with my camera in months. Pleasure to, uh, to meet Lee earlier on. And thank you for joining me. I tell you what, what a morning. Um, amazing. I'll give another mention. I don't have to do this, by the way, as per the contract, but Valerie Photography Gloves are so good. You know what I said to them um, when I was when we were discussing the sponsorship? Um, I said, stupidly, if you, if you sponsor me or not, I'm still going to be promoting these gloves because they're so good. Um, check them out, photographygloves.com. Use Henry at checkout to get free shipping. I swear by them. Um, on that note as well, that's probably another winter photography tr uh, tip. Not necessarily just the gloves, but all the gear. I've felt really warm this morning. I've got a great pair of Solomon boots that are winter. 
Um, between like the down jacket, the waterproof jacket, I've got a pair of long johns on. You know, you don't have to spend a lot of money on gear. The long johns, I've, I think they're just from Asda. <laughs> um, but it's just so much more pleasant being out. And again, that will sort of translate to more hours, more minutes out with your camera. Um, more chance of getting that winter photograph that you're after because, you know, you feel comfortable out and about. Again, really simple to the point where it sounds a bit stupid, but really important. <laughs> um, right, I'm going home. Cup of tea. If there was ever a morning for a cup of tea, in fact, I might treat myself to a hot chocolate. Um, thanks for tuning in. Please give the video a like, as always, if you have a quick second. Comment below. I'd love to hear from you guys. And I'll see you on the next adventure. Out. Mm -hmm.